Transgressive art is art that aims to transgress, outrage or violate basic morals and sensibilities. Many traces of transgression can be found in any art which by some is considered offensive because of its shock value. Transgression can be defined as any overstepping of boundaries as normally laid out by polite society, law or convention. Transgressive artwork is transgressive only in relation to the boundaries particular audiences have. What work of art would not be considered transgressive? An interesting thought experiment is to try to imagine a work of art which is not capable of overstepping any boundaries. First, the artwork must not reference any object as for any potential object there is surely someone somewhere who would take offence. Transgressive art almost always has a mixed reception. Some viewers or participants find the work to be offensive and dangerous, while others might appreciate the artwork as exciting or insightful. Just as there is no work of art that is completely non-transgressive, in that it cannot violate any boundaries, there is no work of art that is ultimately transgressive. If a work manages to be sufficiently transgressive that it offends a large enough majority, it would likely not to be considered artwork, but would be considered dangerous, antisocial or psychotic behaviour. Much radical art takes the liberty of transgressing the boundaries and protocols of certain societal categories, such as God, religion, sexuality, gender, body and finally art history itself. Certainly some art has been controversial throughout the existence of art itself. People have been shocked or disgusted with paintings throughout the centuries. Some seem tame now by comparison and fade into insignificance. Andre Serrano's controversial photograph, Piss Christ, which depicts a figurine of a crucified Jesus Christ in a vat of the artist's urine, is widely considered to be transgressive. Serrano's work generated a storm of controversy and public debate since the work's debut in 1987. But what is it about Piss Christ that makes it transgressive? The essential character of a transgressive work is that it oversteps boundaries. In the case of Piss Christ, the work places what many to be considered sacred, the image of the crucifix, in a context that is not only secular and profane, but is also fundamentally disgusting. The public opinion of the work continues to be negative, and on the 17th of April 2011, a print was vandalised beyond repair by Christian protesters by juxtaposing the sacred and the revolting in this way, Serrano was sure to cause offence among those who consider the crucifix to be a sacred symbol. However, among those who do not hold this belief, the juxtaposition would likely to be less offensive, even though it might still be uncomfortable, disgusting or unpleasant. Transgressive art is first defined in relation to its audience. There must be boundaries in the audience members for the work to overstep. These boundaries differ depending on the audience, but every person will inevitably have some sort of boundaries. Fountain is a 1917 work produced by Marcel Duchamp. The piece was a porcelain urinal which was signed R. Mutt. Its submission was rejected for the exhibition of the of Society of Independent Artists in 1917, and it led to the debate whether or not the piece of work was art or not. Duchamp described his intentions with the piece was to shift the focus of art from physical craft to intellectual interpretation. While it may not seem much to look at today, Marcel Duchamp's fountain changed the art world forever and is credited by many as being one of the most important works of the 20th century. In short, it changed perceptions of art and paved the way for many conceptual artists in the years that followed. No longer did art have to look like something obvious to be considered worthy. In May 1961, Piero Manzoni produced 90 cans of artist shit. Though it is debated whether the contents are shit or actually plaster, opening the can would destroy the value of the artwork. It is undeniably a provocative artwork. Other artists have mimicked this concept or directly copied Manzoni's ideas, notably Gavin Turk who often just signed objects such as eggs or produced art by nibbling a rich tea biscuit 
or treading on paper with ink boots, and Gilbert and George's with their series of large-scale works featuring their own bodily fluids. Excre excrement, like all of the other elements in our pictures, are unifying themes. You can show pictures with shit or with signs of faith and belief anywhere in the world, and they will be understood. They can be read on many, many different levels. And we believe very much that, that because uh, we're trying to make what is unacceptable acceptable, it should be, because it's all part of humanity. And it is, it is part of the big machine of living. It is only a convention that we have these feelings about shit. If we were brought up to eat meals in a darkened room and never to talk about it, that would be our way of life. We would accept that. And There's nothing inside ourselves which really has an objection towards shit. It's we, just a, a convention. We, we wish to be, as artists, unconventional. We have to ask ourselves, why not shit? I think that's the most important question. Why shouldn't shit be shown? Like, we, we look at flowers. We, flowers have sexuality. Us, even nakedness, is very difficult to, uh, to be accepted yet. Oh, that's, that's, that's a perfectly valid thing for them to say. Yes, but we don't believe it is. It's absolutely nothing disgusting. Humanity is not disgusting. Nakedness is not disgusting. Shit is not disgusting. No one can prove that there is anything wrong with our pictures. It would be impossible to prove that. There is no rape. There is no killing. No violence. No violence. Every silly American film is far, far more easily discredited, we would say, with all these cars blowing up and people shooting each other's heads. This is a very gentle, humanistic exhibition. The opening of Sensation at the Royal Academy caused a public furore and a media frenzy. The biggest media controversy was over Myra, an image of the murderer Myra Hindley by Marcus Harvey. Seven pounds to go into that exhibition is blood money. Throughout the day, these protesters had voiced their opposition to the picture. This man was arrested after ink was thrown at it just seven hours after the exhibition opened. Winnie Johnson, the mother of one of Hindley's victims, is said to be delighted the picture's been defaced. She'd earlier said it should be destroyed. The piece is on one level just a representation of the photograph that we all know too well as the image was repeatedly used by the media since her conviction. Harvey has made the image more disturbing by replicating the image using a series of children's handprints. Why would an artist make a painting of Myra Hindley knowing that it would be a controversial act? There's something deeply unsavoury about touching that, but um, because it had been used, it had been through the, 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 the wash and wrung and squeezed like a lemon for 30 years in plays, books, TV, God knows what, I thought it was, it was fair game. It's almost like a piece of pornography, the way that they've enjoyed it, that they probably not thought about it much. I mean, it's really society finding the perfect face for a witch. Started to think about the image and the politics surrounding it and concluded quite quickly that um, she was nailed on that picture. She was nailed on a bottle of peroxide. She was crucified by a bottle of peroxide. I mean, that's, 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 that's an outrageously insensitive thing to say to people who's who've lost loved ones, sort of, that, that were involved in that case. And I suppose somewhere to counterbalance or, or to sort of, as a reminder of what was at stake in that portrait, I had to have the, uh, the children represented. Yeah, by so the it, handprint. By the handprint, so it kind of made a nice, it's sort of a nice solution. wide-ranging practice, installation, sculpture, painting and drawing has sought to challenge the boundaries between art, science and popular culture. Hearst explores the uncertainty at the core of human experience, love, life, death, loyalty and betrayal through unexpected and unconventional media, best known for the natural history works which present animals in vertines suspended in formaldehyde. The moral of the story is that transgressive artists don't care if you're offended because they have the right to offend you. I set out to be controversial. I do what I want to do. 
as when it is exposed more and more to transgressive art, one becomes desensitised. Where can transgressive art go now or next? And has it all been done before? The YBA shock of the new is now old. The artists have become less inventive and have become commercial brands selling anything from limited prints, t-shirts, key rings, tea towels and shopping bags. As everyday tragedies in real life and reports on the news become increasingly graphic and shocking, with the use of modern technology, with instant uploads to the net and YouTube, can artists compete or make art that matches the horrors of real life?